welcome viewers to the SD online classes. Today uh, we will be doing the first chapter of class 9 MBSC. Uh, the chapter name of the chapter is motion and after that you will understand what is force because force is the cause of the motion. What is the reason for motion is force that is your second chapter like that. The first chapter is like this. First of all in order to understand you have one study mechanics mechanics okay what is mechanics let us see mechanics is that so this is mechanics mechanics is the branch of physics physics has a lot of other branches also so that branch which says that the branch which says that which deals which makes you study only materials when they are at rest or they are in motion so they want to study about its motion that means speed velocity all these things this is called mechanics okay and kinematics is what kinematics is another study study of motion again but this is little precise only one one type where we want to study the motion without understanding without knowing the reason of the motion cause of the motion without taking into account means without considering the cause the reason okay these are the two things mechanics and kinematics in our day to day life we will see so many things running moving like buses cars man isn't it ball rolling everything that is the example of motion okay so you can see example of motions are so many motions are so many like man walking isn't it man walking is an example of motion car train running all this these are the examples of motion right now how do we say what is the motion now we will try to define if it is motion let us write in proper sentence what is motion why we say these are in motion why so this is the this is the meaning of motion the object while in motion whenever the any object is in motion what you will see is you will see that continuously you will see that continuously it is changing its position where it was earlier it will not be there after the passage of time with with the passage of time after some time you will see that that object that object is not in the same position that is how you uh, describe the motion in words okay so what we have learned right now is how to describe the motion right so two things are required in order to know that is in anything is in motion okay motion is how to tell number one the reference or stationary that means not moving object stationary object chosen to describe position okay initial position and number two what happens the position must change continuously with time and surrounding these are the two things you need to describe the motion first thing you need a reference point starting point okay where you will understand that it was not moving earlier and in the second time you have to know that when time is passing the object is no more in the same position so it's with the surrounding it has change it now we will define the motion properly okay the real definition will come now that i'll write just now so now this is the definition of motion a body is said to be in motion we will call it motion proper okay you can write in the question answers also if its position with respect to its surrounding with the passage of time okay if it's if it changes to be in motion if it changes okay if it 
changes after that if it changes its position with respect to its surrounding with the passage of time if that happens that is motion or this is the definition of motion okay now similarly there is definition of rest also a body is said to be at rest at rest when if it does not change its position with respect to its surroundings with the passage of time, even after time passing it is 12 hour 13 hour to 1 minute 3, 2 minute whatever it is it may be if the position remains there same just like earlier that means you can say the object is not moving and if the object is at rest that is the thing okay the next topic will be motion along a straight line now you know that motion has been so many kind to study if you want to study motion motion are so many types very different type of motions difficult type of motions but the most simple one is the motion where an object moves in a straight line so that is why just it is a starting point of studying motion so that is why the first thing we study is motion along straight line let us understand what is this motion along a straight line is also called linear motion you can understand from the name itself linear means along the line okay now to understand motion first very first introduction is two things you you need two things what are they they are distance okay and you need time you have to understand these two things to understand what is motion how it is carried out okay now there are other quantities also fundamental just like fundamental derived quantities derived quantities are those which you get from other quantities okay just like fundamental uh, things are a b c d and derived things are with the help of a b c d what you write uh, from the alphabets words those are derived okay just like that distance and time is the starting point we will use distance and time and then we will write velocity acceleration many other things also they are coming from there okay so these are derived from the name also derived Fund fundamental means the original starting one simple one and from there combination of distance by time will become velocity distance by time by time will become acceleration like that okay so let us understand um, the straight line with other terms also straight line motion with other terms also. first is origin origin means starting point from where you take every reference it is also called the fixed reference point is called according to our convenience suppose i want to study the motion of an object here which is moving here or maybe here anywhere and the starting point i think it is o like this then it will be my origin you can take the starting point after its motion here also according to your convenience then that will be origin okay where you think it is the starting point according to your convenience is called origin okay now comes scalar and vector quantities when we are dealing with quantities like distance time velocity acceleration many things there comes a scalar and vector some are scalar some are vector they are very easy scalar quantities are what scalars have magnitude only vectors have magnitude and direction examples distance time there are others also i'll not write okay here the example velocity displacement also remember we are yet to study what is distance displacement all this it will come in the further section also in a quick way i'll write the scalar and vector scalar are properly the physical quantities physical quantities can be mass length whatever okay displacement all these are physical quantities all are physical quantities this is also physical quantity which will describe your situation now out of the physical quantities some require only magnitude that means its value only mass means 7 kg but which direction it will not tell length 
2 km which direction it will not tell temperature 20 degree centigrade which di which direction it will not tell like that these things are called scalar quantities they are completely described only in magnitude only magnitude means only value similarly vector quantities are those in which you need display uh, like displacement velocity acceleration there you have magnitude as well as also as well as means also direction okay the suppose displacement means 5 km towards the north 2 km towards the east these are called with direction velocity also have direction and acceleration also has direction force weight momentum all these have uh, their, their direction so that is why they are called vector quantities okay scalar don't have direction vectors have direction as well as value also like displacement i said 5 km towards east means 5 km is the magnitude towards east is the direction like that you can understand these two things okay so next topic will be your distance now the most basic thing in motion is distance what is distance let's write the definition now see distance is what it is the actual this is important okay? actual length of the path covered by a moving body between initial and final position and it is a its unit is meter m and the uh, distance is a quantity which is scalar quantity i have already told you suppose for example suppose you have one your house is here okay your house is here b is the shop where you want to go and it is your friends friends house okay three things are there suppose you go from here to your gift shop 3 km and then from there you go to your friend's house 4 km okay then your distance will be distance will be how much 3 plus 4 7 km it is the actual length if you measure actual length it is this but there is a shortcut also if you go directly from here to here okay this is also possible this is not distance okay this is not distance this is the distance actual length is important actual length of the path is called distance okay here it is here it is how much if you calculate this it will be uh, 7 km okay it is 7 km so if you calculate this one you may get what 5 km if you if you just calculate this one you will get 5 km now you see this is the shortest distance but we are writing distance as actual distance okay that is important in the next you will understand what is the other the shortcut one also okay now let us see what is displacement displacement is the shortest distance between the initial starting and the final point this is initial this is final so distance you remember it is the actual length 3 plus 4 3 plus 4 is distance why this is the actual path the real what you travel but displacement is not not like that if you go from here and here you reach here then what is your displacement it will be only 5 okay displacement is what displacement is only 5 okay only 5 km so this is the difference and also one important thing is it has direction which side you go that you will be writing there so that is why it is vector quantity vector quantity has direction also 5 km towards a to c okay the remember unit are same because length you are going to measure okay that is why distance also has unit meter displacement also has unit meter okay so this way you can understand the other interesting examples are there suppose you go in a circular way like this and come back here again the display distance will be all this line here okay distance is all that but displacement is again zero if you come back to the initial and final point same displacement will be zero so here another example i'll give you suppose this is your way a to b and you come back again 
back here c you go here come back suppose this is this is 4 km this is 1 km this is 3 km you start from a and come back at c what is the distance distance will be what is the distance try to understand properly okay here what is the distance 1 ac plus cb plus bc that means how much 1 plus 3 plus 3 equal to 7 kilometer now what is the displacement displacement from a to c only you have to see initial position is where a starting final position is where c then what is the displacement only 1 kilometer a to c so that is the difference see 7 kilometers only 1 kilometer okay so this is how here if you start from here and go and come back here again here displacement is zero this denotes vector quantity okay here distance is not zero okay some value will be there this value okay so that is the difference between your distance and displacement and the scalar and vector also will be clear like this right so distance can never be zero or negative okay but displacement can be positive also negative also and even zero also okay so this is the reason what is the difference between main difference between them and after this you go to your page number three of your textbook there you see scalar quantities and vector quantities okay the difference is given so that you have to write in your notebook and try to learn that properly okay so this is all for today's class thank you